If you've been bitten by the watch collecting bug, at some point you're gonna come across high horology timepieces. These are watches that are created by master craftsmen at the peak of their abilities, and oftentimes they push the boundaries so far that these things don't even look like watches, they look like incredibly intricate animated machines on your wrist. Take for instance the Urwerk UR100. This is a watch that displays the time in a really fascinating way with the hours wandering around the dial of the watch pointing to the minutes. It's a little bit difficult at first to take in and to figure out how it works, but once you do, it's very intuitive and incredibly fascinating to think of how they would engineer a movement to display the time in this manner. Unfortunately, it also costs, I think, something around $64,000. So if you're interested in a watch like that, it's probably going to be too expensive. But Adawak Watches, based out of Hong Kong, has recreated this incredibly intricate complication, and they've put it into a watch that costs 32 times less than Urwerks. Today, we're checking out the Adawak Spaceship. Hey guys, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name is Dave, I live in Japan, and I love to collect affordable watches. And because I am into affordable watches, I kind of never thought I would ever get my hands on a watch like this. Normally watches like this I admire from afar, either through YouTube reviews or articles, and yeah, I'm often just completely blown away at the ingenious watchmaking that goes into something like this. This spaceship watch from Adawak looks nothing like any other watch. In fact, it doesn't even look like a watch necessarily. I can't quite settle on whether it looks like a studio quality prop from a Hollywood sci-fi movie or some kind of intricate work of mechanical art. But once you figure out how to tell the time and get it on your wrist, it functions surprisingly well as a timepiece. If you're looking for a conversation starter to give you an excuse to talk to your friends about the intricacies of mechanical watchmaking, this watch will definitely give you that. And while this is not a watch I would consider an affordable watch, typically, again, compared to the competition in the luxury segment, this is shockingly low budget. Essentially, every single component of this watch is custom made and engineered from the ground up to surround and to complement this design that they've come up with except for the watch movement, which is really at the core of the watch. The one thing that you would think they would have to re-engineer to create this is actually an off-the-shelf Miyota 9000 series movement. And to me, it's just so crazy that they were able to build this kind of complication on top of an off-the-shelf movement like that. And that's definitely one of the ways that they were able to get the cost down to this low level. There is a lot to talk about this watch, so we're gonna get right into it. But first, I do need to let you guys know that this watch was given to me by Adawak to review, which is why you saw the paid promotions flag at the beginning of this video. However, other than the watch itself, Adawak did not provide any compensation for this review, nor did they have any input into the content of this review. There's a link to their website down below where you can sign up to pre-order this watch if you do, you'll get a 24% discount, which I think knocks the price down to around $1,400, which is a 24% discount from the full retail price of around $1,900. With all that said, let's jump into this watch, and we're gonna have to start by talking about how you actually tell the time, because that's going to be the key to understanding what's so cool about this watch. Telling the time on this watch is actually pretty easy, but you need to know the trick. Unlike a normal watch, this watch does not have hour and minute hands. In fact, the actual readout is kind of closer to reading a digital watch. Now you're gonna notice that this watch has a very odd shape, but that shape is intentional. It comes out of the function of this watch. And in fact, the shape of the case and the shape of that incredibly intricate sapphire crystal is divided into two main sections. The lower section is the only part where you need to see the time, but the upper portion has also been made transparent to allow you to see how the mechanics work inside of this watch. So if you look down in that lower portion, you're gonna see a scale, which is the minute scale for the watch. And rather than being a full circle, it's just a semicircle or an inverted arch. And on that scale, you're gonna see a little disc with a number in it with a little line underneath that is pointing to one of the numbers on that minute scale. And as you might have figured out by now, that number on the disc is gonna represent the hours, and that little line under the hours is gonna to point to the minutes on that inverted arch. In a sense, it's kind of like the hours are being displayed on the minute hand of the watch, which on any sort of a normal watch would never work. It would be impossible. And when you start to think of how you could possibly make a watch that does that, you'll begin to appreciate the mechanics that have gone into putting this complication together. Now this complication is referred to as a wandering hour complication because the hours kind of wander across the dial of the watch. 
So as each hour passes, the currently displayed hour will slowly move across that arch in a circle. And when the current hour finishes its cycle and moves off of the scale at the same time, the next hour will enter on the right side, beginning the cycle all over again. And it's actually surprisingly easy to read the time on this watch once you know that trick. For one, the reading of the hours is going to be pretty much instantaneous because it's very easy to see that big disc that's pointing at the bottom side of the dial. The minutes will get a little bit trickier because that is kind of some small print, but you do have every five minute indexed on that scale, so it's fairly easy to pick out the time there as well. And I really like that. This is some completely out of the box thinking where you've completely redefined what a watch is or how to tell the time on a watch, and yet actually it's still pretty easy to read. This is a time telling method that actually makes sense, it's practical, it's functional, and yet it also looks unlike anything else out there when it comes to watches. And even more impressive, it is 100% mechanical. There's no microchips or batteries inside this. This is all powered by gears and springs and charged by the movement of your wrist. And typically to come up with such an innovative way to tell the time, you're gonna to have to create your own movement, which is gonna cost millions and millions of dollars of research and development trying to figure out how to do something like that and then actually produce it at scale. And this is why watches that use these sort of novel time-telling mechanics typically cost tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars. And yet Adawak figured out that you could actually create this complication by building a module on top of a standard off-the-shelf mechanical movement. So the actual heart of this watch is built around a Miyota 9000 series movement, which is an excellent affordable movement, probably the best affordable watch movement out there. You'll typically find this in watches costing anywhere from around 400 to maybe up to around $1,000. It's highly accurate, very reliable, and made in Japan. But it's a standard watch movement expecting a standard handset to be installed on it. It expects there to be an hour hand that will make one complete rotation around the dial once every 12 hours, a minute hand that will make that same rotation every one hour, and then a second hand that will make that rotation once a minute. But when you look at the Adawak spaceship, it doesn't have an hour hand or a minute hand. I mean, you can see the second hand, it's that little wheel spinning around in the middle, that spins around at one minute increments. But rather than having an hour and a minute hand, you have this big round mechanism that has three individual dials on it, with each dial having four numbers on it, and that whole mechanism rotates once every three hours. And in addition to that entire carriage mechanism revolving around the dial, it also advances each one of those individual hour dials once an hour. And because Adawak left the upper portion exposed, you can actually see how this works and begin to understand what they've done here. There are three of these little hour wheels on the watch. One of them will be pointing at the minute scale, indicating that that is the current hour. The next one will be lining up, getting ready to enter from the right side as soon as the one on the dial exits on the left and the third dial will be changing to get ready to display the next time. This will make more sense if we speed everything up. Take a look at this time lapse. You can see at the start it's about 2.45 and the two is getting ready to exit the dial on the left and the three is already ready to go getting ready to enter from the right. And as you would expect, the dial ahead of two is displaying one because it was one before two. But the watch needs to change that one to a four so that it will be able to enter after the three when it's its turn. And so as that number one dial is wandering across the top of the watch, it's also advancing and changing into a four to get ready to follow the three when it's its turn. And I think the way it's doing it is just with a series of gears on the underside of that carriage and underneath each of those individual dial markers so that when they advance across the top portion of the watch, the gear catches and then rotates it as it's wandering across. It's an ingenious and actually kind of simple and elegant way to produce this complication. Now it's gonna take some definite modifications. You're gonna to have to gear down the minute hand if that's what's actually powering this. I'm not even sure, but you know, the minute hand rotates once every one hour, whereas this carriage is rotating at once every three hours. There's also the challenge that this carriage mechanism is way heavier than a minute or hour hand. And so having the watch power that and be able to maintain accurate timing must require something going on there that I don't quite understand. But it was kind of interesting when you when I watch on the time lapse, you can see that it doesn't actually move at a constant speed when it's advancing the dial that's changing. That extra energy required to turn around that portion of the timekeeping kind of causes it to speed up and slow down a little bit. Now, when you have the watch on your wrist, you're never gonna notice that because it happens so slow. But when you speed it up like this, you can kind of see that it does sort of jump ahead 
a, a, a little bit. And you would think that would affect the timekeeping, that this would make the watch really inaccurate because it's got this different levels of pressure being exerted on the movement at different times. And yet I had this thing sitting in my watch winder for days, and at the end of like three or four days, it was only running about 20 or 30 seconds off. So well within the standard tolerances of what you would expect for a normal watch movement. So absolutely crazy mechanics inside of this watch. And again, because this watch is not only having intricate mechanics inside, but it's, it's sort of reinventing how you tell time, they've created a design and a case and a crystal and everything to support that new method of telling time. It has this kind of oblong case shape where it's wider and rounder at the bottom and then it slopes up almost to a point at the top of the watch. And that's because you need a large section at the bottom to house all of those individual minutes and make them large enough and easy enough to read. But you can actually narrow things down considerably at the top, and that's what they've done, which actually helps to improve the experience on the wrist quite a bit. To keep things symmetrical and really clean looking, they put the crown at the top of the watch, and you can access the hand winding just with your thumb by running it over the top of that. And if you need to set the time, you can simply pull it out like you would on a normal crown and rotate it around. And that's actually the easiest way to see how the time changes. If you do that uh, by hand, you can kind of speed things up and see the hours advancing in the background and kind of appreciate that a little bit more. But one of my favorite things about this design is that incredible crystal that they have here. I've never seen a sapphire crystal engineered in this way, and I can't imagine it was easy. This is a totally custom crystal that has a very unique shape that has been machined to fit into this watch. Not only is it not round, but it also has two surfaces on it. So you have one kind of flat area that's going over the area where you would read the dial, and then a curved area that kind of follows the seams of the case, sort of looking like a windshield on a car or a spaceship. And while a crystal of this shape is obviously going to have a lot of reflections, which gave me a challenge when filming this, it's actually not that difficult to get a good clear read on the watch because you really only have to worry about the reflections on that flat part of the watch. And it's easy to find an angle where you're not getting any reflections there. And when you look at this case shape and that crystal, it's clear to see where they got the inspiration to make this a spaceship kind of sci-fi theme design. And I think they did a really good job of pulling that off with some really nice case finishing, some nice shapes and bevels to the case. And and then definitely with the way they've engineered the carriage inside with that spinning dial in the middle, it definitely looks like the heart of a spaceship, like you have a piece of nanotechnology or something on your wrist. But again, this is all powered by something a lot more old fashioned with a mechanical automatic watch movement in the middle of it. They've also created a lugless system for the strap to attach to, and they sent me two different straps to try out, a blue one and a black one. So there's a couple of different colors there. Both are very high quality, thick, comfortable FKM rubber straps, which really go a long way to creating a great wearing experience on the wrist. There are no spring bars. Instead, the watch has a kind of integrated spring bar system with a little lever on the underside that when you pull, it retracts the spring bars so that you can remove the strap and put a new one on. It makes for very quick, simple strap changes. But again, since there's so few strap options available, I'm not sure how useful that is, but again, it is cool to see that they have just completely custom designed and engineered like every single little aspect of this watch. Overall, the design is equal parts fun and cool. And things get even more interesting when the lights go down because they've applied loom in some incredibly interesting ways that really highlight and accentuate this design and really lean into that science fiction theme. The loom is such that you can easily read the watch in the dark so it's functional and practical. However, it doesn't last as long as like a dive watch. So don't expect this to perform like a sports watch. That's not what this watch is about. It only has 30 meters of water resistance, but it still feels incredibly solid and well-built. It's not one I would have any concern with damaging with just normal everyday wear. If you guys like what you're seeing so far, make sure you hit the like button down below. And if you are interested in affordable watch collecting, also please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you're not in the market to buy a crazy spaceship watch, maybe you want to get a watch themed t-shirt like this one, which I'm selling over on my website at justthewatch.com. Now, crazy design and ingenious mechanics aside, does this watch actually work as a watch on your wrist? Let's talk about that. With a maximum height of 16 millimeters, you might expect this to be a pretty unwieldy watch, but that's actually not the case. The shape of this watch is unlike any other watch out there, so you can't really compare it to other 16 millimeter tall watches. This thing slopes all over the place, and in fact, at the thinnest part of the watch, it's only about 12 millimeters tall. 
and the other dimensions are quite manageable. At the widest point, it's only 42 millimeters, and going across the lug to lug, which you would typically call lug to lug, uh, is about 52 millimeters. So definitely a big watch, but not huge by any means. And on that rubber strap with the deployant clasp, I found it very well balanced and very comfortable on the wrist. Again, with a watch of this size, you are going to notice it's there, but it's actually a lot more comfortable than a lot of other watches that I've worn, even watches that are much smaller than this. And it's a very solid feeling watch. This is not a dainty watch that I'd be afraid to wear every day. It definitely feels and looks like a very high quality, well-made timepiece. And I thought I would be pretty self-conscious wearing this watch out in public because this isn't quite matching with my personality. I absolutely love complicated things like this and I'm kind of a nerd at heart, but I'm also more self-conscious than I probably should be and typically wouldn't be flaunting that aspect of my personality. But that said, when I was wearing this around, I didn't mind it at all. It didn't feel like I had a kid's toy on my wrist. Again, I think the wearing experience felt more like wearing around like a Hollywood prop or something. And probably that crazy sapphire crystal with all of the amazing distortion and that high quality stainless steel case and finishing really does a good job of making this not look like some little kid's toy. These are extremely high quality materials done with a very good finishing and all of that really shows and puts together an impressive exterior. My wife, on the other hand, was a lot less enthusiastic about it, but that's pretty much par for the course. Now, let's talk a little bit about cons. I mean, I think the biggest thing is just not really a con, but just you got to consider whether this is something that's for you. Uh, this is an expensive watch as far as I'm concerned. You know, the price range here is a lot higher than I would typically spend, and you're looking at comparing this to brands like Oris or Hamilton, some really high quality, really established brands that make some very classic, timeless pieces. And this is not that. This is something radically, completely different, which is why it kind of justifies this price. But if you want a normal, high quality watch, there's a lot of other options out there. But for me, the bigger consideration would be that looking at this kind of an investment into a watch from a micro brand like this that has this kind of complication, you got to wonder, what are you going to do 10 years from now when you need to get this watch serviced? Good luck finding a local watchmaker who'd be willing to take a shot at servicing this. And you've just got to hope that Adawak is still in business 10 years from now and able to service your watch internationally when you need it but that's gonna be wrapped into the cost of getting a watch that is this unique and this interesting at this kind of mid-range price level. It's really hard to compare this watch to other watches in the same price range because again, there's not really any other watches like this in the price range. This watch is doing something that is completely different and it has strengths that are in a completely different area and it's got weaknesses that are also gonna be, again, different from anything else out there. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. For me personally, this is probably not a watch I would wear on a regular basis just because of the out there design, but that's kind of the point of this watch and it's gonna take certain people with certain personalities to really take this and gravitate toward it and wear it. I'm probably actually gonna be giving this one to my dad who just absolutely loves watches like this. He's a retired pastor who loves talking to people, so any excuse to start a conversation is great for him. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this watch. Please drop me a comment down below. Let's talk a little bit about it and see what you guys think. But that will wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.